Thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring today's video. Shotguns, we all love them, right? So I decided to do Terraria Master Mode with only the shotgun subclass, which honestly doesn't get enough love. The guns are pretty good. Before we get into the chaos that is shotguns only master mode, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. We're closing in on 100,000 subscribers. It's been my lifetime dream. I'd really appreciate it and I can only do it with your help. Let's jump right into the challenge that I actually had a bit of fun with for once in my life. So I start off my world without the ability to kill any enemies. I have to throw away my copper short sword. And the first weapon I'll be able to get is the boomstick, which is located in the jungle. But I'm just not strong enough to make my way to the jungle yet. So I make my way down a cave, mine some ores, and get some life crystals. I quickly get Hermes boots, some gems, some iron. And a minecart leads me to a desert chest with the snake charmer's flute in it. And then I go home against my will. Now it's nighttime and I have no way to kill these zombies. I think they wanted to tell me about their new life insurance plan or something. I didn't want any part of it, so I made a little house, made some armor, and waited out the night. <laughs> bro, bro shot in the wrong direction, are you stupid? And now with a little bit of cactus armor, not really doing me much good, and the Hermes boots, I'm able to run my way to the jungle, which happens to be on the right side of the world. I then start digging down in the jungle, because there are jungle bats outside, and I'm just gonna dig straight down and hope for the best. I used a hunter potion to make sure that I'm not bumping into any hornets or man eaters, and I bump into a jungle shrine, and the first chest I open in the jungle that I happened to wind up upon while digging straight down contains a boomstick let's go no way the first ivy chest i found just by digging straight down has a boomstick in it that's freaking nuts some insane luck to start off the run i don't even know what to say my luck is just built different so now i just need to make some houses and hope for the arms dealer and eventually he arrives and i'm able to buy some musket balls and the boomstick is actually a pretty good weapon and i actually prefer over the mini shark now i went to the underground desert to collect some desert fossil now i'm also going to need an extractinator to actually extractinate the fossil but with that i'll be able to make desert fossil armor which is the range set i got enough amber to make an amber hook and continued just gaining resources mining getting the life crystals i need eventually in a glowing mushroom house i find an extractinator finally i can watch my life ticking away as i hold left click down on a machine filling my pockets but not filling the emptiness in my soul and that wasn't nearly enough desert fossil to get fossil armor and then an evil presence watches over me which means i have Cthulhu's gonna spawn tonight and i think i can easily beat it a boomstick is far good enough to beat the Eye of Cthulhu. I drink only a swiftness potion as I just don't have any other potions to aid me in this fight. I do have a full set of silver armor which helps with the defense side but I don't have a bar statue, iron skin or anything. So I will be taking more damage than I usually do with this fight. Once I have Cthulhu gets the second phase it's harder to hit him but the shotgun has a nice wide spread so it's not too hard to hit him. He keeps dashing around hitting me occasionally but with the Hermes boots and my grappling hook it's not too hard and and with 100 health to spare, the Eye of Cthulhu has been defeated. Now, I know plenty of people tell me that I can use the Shield of Cthulhu, that you guys don't care, that I should just use it. But here's what I tell you. Um, no? I think at this point, I've just gotten used to not using it. I used to think it was the best accessory ever, but I honestly just haven't needed it for multiple playthroughs. I headed back to the underground desert and collected the last fossils I needed and got myself to full hearts. And I also finally found a bar statue. And now I have enough desert fossil and way too much time on my hands to extractinate all of it and get the fossil armor. I then used some gravity potions and got some sky island loot like a lucky horseshoe and red balloon. Then there's a blood moon which gives me two money troughs but no shark tooth necklace. And then right after a goblin army spawns. And there really were no problem. I definitely didn't die at all. The boomstick took good care of them. Then I spelunked down into the caves and found the goblin tinkerer. Then while I'm in the snow biome another blood moon happens. And the reason I went to the snow biome was to get a blizzard in a bottle and after clearing out a bunch more blood moon enemies still no shark tooth necklace i then reforged my boomstick to unreal and now it's time to fight the brain of cthulhu now the brain shouldn't be too much of an issue i just shoot the creepers keep my distance from them it's definitely not the easiest boss i don't have a ton of pierce capabilities so killing all the creepers is a bit of a struggle but soon enough all of them are killed and it's just 
the brain. And this is the easy part of the fight. Because the boomstick knocks the brain back enough that it stays at a distance from me. Now, it does get a bit more difficult when I have to figure out which one's the real one. But I don't really have any problems with that. I somehow just know. It's kind of like a sixth sense thing. I don't really know what makes it obvious. I don't know. I just kind of know which one it is. And there you have it. Brain of Cthulhu has been defeated. I didn't really get much from that. Hellstone won't really do much for me right now. So I quickly move on to Skeletron. Now, I've used the boomstick against Skeletron before. It actually is pretty good against him. It does good damage to the hands, but I was really doing a lot more damage to the right hand. I had to balance it out. I didn't want to break the right hand too quickly or else he'll start shooting the homing skulls before I can even hit the main skull. But eventually I wouldn't, but eventually I whittled bro. But eventually I whittled both hands down enough that I could destroy them both quickly and now it's just the skull. The damage isn't phenomenal, but I've done worse. Much worse. I just kept dodging his attacks using my rocket boots, laying my boomstick shots into him. His head's big enough that the shotgun pellets just divulge into him. I'm not missing many bullets at all. And it was only a matter of time until Skeletron fell to me with plenty of time in the night to spare. With Skeletron defeated, I ventured down into the dungeon. There are only a couple things I want in here. I want a shadow key, maybe a cobalt shield, and I also want a bunch of bones for necro armor. So I just farm a bunch of skeletons, and when I have enough bones, I head home, but I don't have quite enough cobwebs. So I have to go around my caves looking for cobwebs, which I've never really had to do. I usually have an abundance of it. Eventually, I found enough to make the necro set. I then killed myself, and I promise it's not because of these challenges. I did it so I can get a bunch of gravestones so I could make a graveyard biome where I had the arms dealer in the desert so that I could buy the quad barrel shotgun, which only unlocked locks after you've defeated Skeletron. I then went fishing, hooray for fishing, and then slime fell from the sky. So after tearing apart the slime population, it's what I do best, mass genocide on an overpopulated mob, the king slime spawned, and the quad barrel shotgun, don't underestimate it, especially for something as big as the king slime, if I got close enough, it was doing massive damage, huge bursts of damage. The quad barrel shotgun shoots slower than the boomstick and has a much wider spread, but it shoots much more bullets. So in some situations, the boomstick is actually better, like if an enemy is further away or smaller, but the quad barrel shotgun is better if you're getting up in their face or if the enemy is bigger. And now it's time to fight the queen bee. I decided to do this without an arena of any sorts or any arena buffs. I just wanted to fight it head on, no buffs. Let's just see if we can do it. This is very unlike me. I usually min max everything. I'll use all the potions I can. I'll make an arena. I didn't used to do this. I used to just go head on with bosses but master mode has changed me. I want to get the most buffs out of everything constantly. I will fish. I will do whatever I need. I want to be as strong as possible before I fight these bosses. But for the queen bee, something clicked in me, you know? I just wanted to fight this thing head on. Use an actual weapon against it, unlike last playthrough. And with the quad barrel shotgun and the boomstick, it's really no problem. I'm doing tons of damage. I did start to get kind of low at one point, but I beat the queen bee with about 130. 30 health left. I didn't really get anything from that boss and I wasn't going to get anything from that boss that I was going to use. It was just for fun. I then spawned a blood moon this time so that I could buy a bunch of silver bullets. These do more damage than musket balls. They don't really do anything special except more damage. And another blood moon goes by without a shark tooth necklace. The shotguns don't really benefit too much from it since they do high damage. So whatever. I don't care. It's fine. I then fished some more. Gaming. I then finally made it to hell and started working on a hell bridge. And normally I'd say I'll spare you from the details, but this time I'm gonna change things up. I'm not gonna spare you from the details. Um, uh, building. I built bridge. I built it and I built and I built. Um, and then enemies attacked me while I was building and then I killed them and then I built some more. All right, I'm bored. Wall of flesh time. But to do that, I might sacrifice my best friend, Jeff. Rest in peace, Jeff. It was for the cause. Never forget. But before we do that, I'm gonna tell you about today's sponsor, War Thunder. War Thunder Thunder is the best vehicle combat game on the market and it's available on PC and consoles right now. You can command over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters and ships of 10 major nations. From the classic propeller planes and armored cars of the 1920s to the modern fighter jets and tanks of today. Personally, I love the aviation combat. It's so much fun to just fly around and shoot other players. Some games design aviation combat so poorly, but this game did it perfectly. It takes some skill, but it's easy to pick up. It's realistic, fun, and immersive. Also, War Thunder is heavily optimized, so that means you can run it on even low-end PCs. And you're still gonna get some high frame rates and impressive visuals. War Thunder's intense and really 
Catalyst to combat can easily suck you into the grittiness of warfare through some incredibly detailed vehicles, impressive graphics, and fantastic sound design. It'll put you right at the helm of some of the most powerful war machines of our time. It also features an in-depth customization system with countless camos, historical markings, and decorations for any vehicle type, so you can decorate your little war machine just the way you like it. Join the other 70 million players worldwide for some immersive PvP battles today, because there is literally nothing that matches War Thunder's realism and breathtaking experience. With so much high quality content to discover, there's nothing that comes close to War Thunder for fans of military simulations and history. And best of all, you can use the link in the pinned comment or in the video description to sign up for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox. If you make a new account or you haven't played for the last six months, you receive a huge bonus pack filled with things that give you a head start in the game, including multiple premium vehicles, the exclusive vehicle decorator Eagle of Valor, 100,000 silver lions, and eight days of premium account time. That's over a week. Make sure to be quick because it's only available for a limited time. Thank you so much to War Thunder for sponsoring today's video. This couldn't be possible without them and make sure to show them some love. Let's get back to the video. So the quad barrel shotgun kind of slaps against this fight. I have a godly one, so it knocks them back real far. The spread hits like all the hungry at once. Some of them even get past and hit the eyes and the mouth. So I just keep laying into it. The hungry are just getting knocked back a bunch. The fire rate is really slow and the hungry do grow back pretty pretty quick so I'm not keeping them at bay too much but the damage that sneaks through the hungry is nothing to scoff at it's actually not too bad I switch to the boomstick sometimes just to sneak in a few hits and I just keep laying into the wall of flesh with my quad barrel shotgun jumping to dodge the lasers the fight is taking longer than I anticipated I may have just said that this weapon was tearing him apart but it wasn't actually the damage was a little pathetic so I ran out of bridge space and that's not good because I ran into an obsidian house which ended up getting me killed. So that was a bit of an L. So I decided to reforge my quad barrel shotgun to Unreal this time. And then the goblins come again. So I had to commit mass genocide on another populace. And then I expanded my bridge this time. And then sacrificed my best friend, Jack. You will be forgotten. You, you will not be forgotten, Jack. Rest in peace. Salutes in the chat. You will be forgot. You will not be forgotten. This time around, I just do more of the same stuff with the wall of fletch. I just have more space. I've run out of bridge again. I still didn't build enough bridge like an idiot but luckily there's not really any obsidian houses in the way this far out in hell i get some good distance on it so once it speeds up i'm not caught in it and just like that the wall of flesh has been defeated now we're in hard mode and you know what else is hard mode living life not subscribed to me so you should probably just subscribe you know now that we've entered hard mode there is a shotgun i can get immediately i can buy it from the arms dealer it's just called shotgun <laughs> that's it it's just it's just shotgun i then went and found the shimmer got my vital crystal and changed my emblem into a ranger emblem. I then went down into the underground crimson and got some icor. And then I went into the lesser underground crimson and broke some crimson altars, which gave me palladium, mithril, and adamantite. Not the best selection, but you know what? It's fine. I don't even use titanium armor these days. I'm more of a frost armor guy. I've evolved, which means I'm not hindered by which ores they give me. It doesn't matter anymore. I will not be shackled by the RNG of of my ore generation. After mining a bunch of hard mode ores and going through the underground hallowed to get some crystals, I go to the snow when it's raining to fight ice golems. Now I fight them like a man, head on. And by that, I mean my head is in his toes, shooting a shotgun right into him, blocked off. Luckily he's made of ice, so his toes don't really stink that bad. I guess you could say unlucky, am I right, <laughs> gamers? That's disgusting, I'm sorry. I managed to get an ice feather, which means I won't be making pixie wings this time around, guys. I'm sorry. I know. I'm sorry to disappoint, but it's just how it is. Frost armor gives the benefits of melee and range, which is really good because I'm basically getting the defense of a melee set and the damage buffs of range, and also getting frost burn inflict on every attack. And while I was at the Crimson Desert, I got two dark shards. With my shotgun, two dark shards, and ten souls of night, I made the Onyx Blaster. The Onyx Blaster, holy crap. This weapon is good. It's actually like 
really good. Fought the Wyvern a couple times, which showed the real true power of this shotgun. Doing massive damage. And I made some frozen wings. The really nice part about the Onyx Blaster is that extra projectile. It's a really consistent bullet, which explodes and allows me to use it at more of a range. I then made an artificial corruption so that I could get wrath potions. And then I feel vibrations from deep below. So I'm going to attempt the destroyer, even though I'm not entirely prepared for it. I basically am, but my arena isn't really ready for it. So I'm going to be using the Onyx Blaster against him. The Onyx Blaster can clear out the probes really easily and does enough damage to the destroyer. But I'm taking quite a bit of damage here. I got down to the hundreds until I did pop a potion. The probes are whittling down. I do get back up to full health. I just keep laying my Onyx Blaster into it. It's not a piercing weapon, but the crystal bullets and the Onyx Blaster's projectile are doing plenty of damage. And I defeat the destroyer at 1.30 a.m. So a bit of time left. I then fought the hardest boss yet. This was really a big challenge. The Eater of Worlds. It was so hard that I failed my first attempt because it just randomly despawned. But I fought it again and finally defeated the Eater of Worlds. I got a corruption key again. I don't know why this keeps happening to me where I get corruption keys in Crimson Worlds. First of all, there isn't even a corruption chest. And second of all, I can't use the weapon in it. I then make a big mimic farm with my Gravedigger's shovel. I should do this more often because it's a way better way to actually farm mimics than just looking around in the underground caves. It's so much better this way. And now I challenge the twins. This one should be pretty easy, although shotguns struggle a little bit at range and the twins I kind of need to keep distance from. But the Onyx Blaster, as I said, is the best shotgun at this point for range. So it absolutely shredded Spasmatism. Spasmatism got down to second phase so quickly. Someone said that Spaz is a bad term to use, so I shouldn't call Spasmatism Spaz for short. For short, I'm going to call him Rhett and Link. And in no time, Link was defeated, and now it's just Rhett that's left over. The Onyx Blaster teared through these bosses. It's actually a phenomenal gun, which I thought was modded at one point. And just like Link, Rhett was absolutely annihilated in no time. And that's Rhett and Link down, and then slept till nighttime and challenged the last mechanical boss, Skeletron Prime. I mean, if the twins were easy, Skeletron Prime will probably be just as easy. He's got a little bit more mobility, but seriously, is no problem. I just lay into it. The Onyx Blaster just tears through everything, which I sure as hell hope it does, because this is the last shotgun I'll have for a long time. I keep laying into Skeletron, tearing it apart. I managed to destroy its laser hand before its head, and then I just target the head completely, doing massive damage, hitting those shots like a gamer, taunting him by doing a 360 no-scope to finish him off. And then I decided to fight the Queen Slime for fun. Nothing really I want from this, except maybe the mount. I'm doing big damage to her, although I forget to kill its minions, so the projectiles do start to overwhelm a little bit. But I mean, it was no problem. I was tearing up her gelatinous body like it was none of my business. I don't know what that even meant. And with no problems at all, the regal slime of the female variants has been defeated. And I did get the mount. I then get a slice of cake from the party girl and farm a bunch of bacon. And with my tremendous digging speed, I dig a bunch of chlorophyte. Now you might be thinking, oh, chlorophyte, fantastic. Now I can just make chlorophyte bullets. I don't even have to aim. Well, you'd be incorrect. I am not going to be using chlorophyte bullets this playthrough. I feel like it kind of takes away from the heart of shotguns, which is the spread of it and the difficulty of having to be closer to the enemy. And the fact that shotguns shoot so many bullets and all of them will connect with chlorophyte bullets, it's absurdly busted. And it wouldn't really be a challenge run if it was too easy. I then shimmered a life fruit to get the Aegis fruit and searched far and wide in the jungle to get myself 500 max health. And then dug out a big arena for Plantera. And while I was at it, slayed the Torch God. Now it's time to fight Plantera. Now I've gotten much better at Plantera than I used to be. Really, it's not that hard. I mean, I've beat it with blood water before, so like, it's no problem. First phase, I just circle around her with my Onyx Blaster, doing ridiculous amounts of DPS. The fact that the Onyx Blaster is a pre-mech weapon and it's destroying Plantera like this is kind of absurd. But pretty quickly, Plantera goes into second phase and now it gets a little bit harder. My arena wasn't massive. I didn't think I really needed a massive arena for this fight considering the damage I can do. And yeah, I was kind of right because while I was taking some damage here and there, I was doing enough damage to her that it was over in no time and Plantera has fallen to me. And I managed to get the axe. Brings out my inner basis. I made a house in the underground glowing mushroom biome to put the dryad in to get some glowing mushroom seeds so that I could get the truffle. And I made a full set of my armor and a hoverboard. And then I headed into the post Plantera dungeon. And this is when the cracks really started to 
show in my arsenal. Even with my armor, I was getting torn apart. My Onyx Blaster was not doing a ton of damage to these guys, and I was dying constantly. It was really frustrating me, and it just felt like a never-ending gauntlet of throwing myself at enemies, trying to find a tactical skeleton, which they're really quite rare, and just not finding any. But finally, after multiple tactical skeleton kills, I finally got the tactical shotgun. Now, the tactical shotgun, honestly, it's kind of not as good as the onyx blaster i'm not even gonna lie i mean it's good don't get me wrong but without chlorophyte bullets it really isn't as good as it could be you have to get up real close to do any damage and especially with the post planterra dungeon they're so small that the damage doesn't feel that good and i still haven't gotten my black belt so i have to keep throwing myself down there dying constantly because my weapons just aren't good enough killing bone lees not getting my black belt doing it all over again death after death the black belt finally dropped and I could make the Master Ninja gear. And then a solar eclipse happened. I'm willing to spare you from the details here. There wasn't too much that went on except a lot of deaths. And I mean a lot of deaths. Stuff like nail heads just drove me insane. And then I found the Lizard Temple, entered inside of it, dodged all the traps that I could, and made it into the boss area, which isn't massive. It's actually quite small. For this fight, I'm just using the Master Ninja gear dash and shooting my tactical shotgun down on it. It's a good thing that I drank the archery potion because there's a bug in the game that actually considers the tactical shotgun a bow. A lot of people don't know this, probably because I just made it up. Now, I'm afraid to admit it, but I was actually losing a bunch of health at one point, mainly because of my very limited arena space. But, I mean, the golem is quite textbook. With the limited arena space, it was actually a little difficult, especially with the fireballs bouncing around everywhere, but we did defeat it first try. It wasn't even close. So, I did get the pixel, and I was quick to open up the arena quite a bit more, and I fought the golem a few more times in the hopes of getting an eye of the golem. I opened up the arena even more, continued to fight him relentlessly, not getting what I wanted. So I decided to shift my attention a little bit. While I was fishing for Ebon Koi, a Martian probe popped up on my life form analyzer. So I quickly went up and let it probe me. Now this is always a mistake because the Martian Madness event drives me insane to the brink of insanity, but there is a drop I want from it. So I fight the aliens with my shotguns, die multiple times, and then UFO spawns, which is exactly what I want, but I die basically instantly. Another UFO spawns, and I die basically instantly to the death ray. Another spawns, and I die to the rockets. Another spawns, and this time, I'm determined to actually defeat it and read its attack patterns. I went straight into its death ray for some reason, but I'm not going to do that again. Eventually, it's down to its death ray phase. I luckily dodge a death ray, which would have killed me instantly. I get hit by an enemy, which almost kills me and almost knocks me into the death death laser but very quickly after I defeat the UFO and I get cosmic car keys which is not at all what I wanted but I fight another one and defeat it and luckily this time I get an electrosphere launcher which is exactly what I didn't want so I shifted gears and went back to the golem and died so after uninstalling the game I went back and fought him a bunch more times and just wasn't getting the freaking eye of the golem tearing through ammo tearing through everything this playthrough really started to fall apart but finally finally I after so many golem fights, I got the eye of the golem. Finally. So that's one component. Now I need to get the other one, which is found in my favorite spot, the post Plantera dungeon. So I died and died and died trying to get the one thing I needed. I had to find skeleton snipers, which are also quite difficult to find and rare. I got the sniper rifle before I even got what I wanted. Everything at this point was frustrating me beyond belief. It was the golem. Then it's this. Then it's the Martian madness. I hated everything. But I finally got the rifle scope, which actually dropped from a skeleton sniper, in which I was able to make the sniper scope accessory. It was all for 10% range damage and 10% crit chance and the ability to aim when holding right click. But now, the worst of it all, the Martian Madness event. I have to farm this dreaded event constantly. I fight the Martians until a UFO decides to show its face, and then I die. I find another one, and this one despawns. Who knows why it despawned? I fought another one, and I died to the saucer laser 
laser, which glitched out and shot like a hundred thousand of them when I died. I then died and died and died. It wasn't just the UFOs, also the aliens shooting at me while I was fighting the UFO that was really, really destroying my will to live. I finally defeated another saucer and it dropped the car keys. And then I died. I beat another one and got the car keys again. And you won't believe what I got from the UFO the next time I beat it. That's right, car keys. Now this was a sign from the universe that I should actually use the car keys against the UFO. With their infinite flight, it actually makes the UFO fight much easier. But I died to the UFO and I died again to scrap. I didn't even know before this playthrough that the little fire parts that fall out of the UFO once you've destroyed its parts do damage to you. I then waited and waited for a UFO. I defeated it and it dropped the Xeno stuff. <laughs> well, that would have been freaking fantastic for my playthrough when I needed it the most and it didn't give it to me. Freaking repeat after repeat. I've got every drop from the UFO with repeats except the Xeno stuff. Not to mention in all of this, I'm using up my bullets. I defeated another saucer just barely and I got the influx waiver and the Martians have been defeated so I have to summon more which took forever then I killed another UFO and got another influx waiver kill electrosphere launcher kill Xeno star at this point I've got a really good rhythm on the UFO I know how to beat it basically every time now but that doesn't stop it from not dropping anything that I want because it drops another electrosphere launcher another one down and I get a laser machine gun <laughs> Another influx <laughs> waiver. Another cosmic car key. This is ridiculous. Another laser machine gun. I am losing my freaking mind. I then died to the death ray because it did some really freaking weird behavior. Another cosmic car key. Another electrosphere launcher. Bro, come on. This is stupid. Another electrosphere launcher. Oh my freaking gosh. Another laser machine gun. This is getting so stupid at this point and wouldn't you guess it another electrosphere freaking launcher bro <laughs> stupid it's so dumb what do i need to do what do i need to do it's almost been two and a half hours just look at my lineup of relics it's insane another electrosphere launcher i'm going to be blacklisted from space after the massive genocide that i've committed against all of these aliens and the amount of financial turmoil they will be in after all of the spacecrafts and all the materials I've destroyed but they just keep coming and I'll keep killing them until they give me what I want <laughs> <laughs> Another influx waiver. Bro, I got the sword again. And finally, after over three hours of fighting the Martian Madness event, this was probably worse than the last time on my Invisible Enemies playthrough. I finally got the Xeno Popper. I don't think you understand how much I hate the Martians. Now, the Xeno Popper is our final shotgun. It behaves very differently from other shotguns. It shoots out a bunch of bubbles, which after a short delay burst and will shoot out bullets wherever the cursor is when the bubbles pop but it's really quite good it's much more of a concentrated shotgun attack which means it's much easier to use at a range so after murdering the aliens and fighting another ufo which dropped another influx waiver i admired my line of saucer relics and the absolute turmoil i had to go through to get them and now i fought the old ones army and after farming a bunch of waves and not being able to defeat betsy i finally got the valhalla's chest plate just for a bunch of life regen and and the red riding leggings and now i set up an arena to fight the empress of light and i was aiming him with my sniper scope for most of this fight this was just to make sure that my xeno popper was hitting correctly it did make it much easier to hit her i just kept dodging around my xeno popper was doing enough damage to her and then she got the second phase she does quite a bit of damage to me but i have a bunch of life regen and i have empress of light down at this point and the xeno popper is good enough to defeat the empress of light and i get my soaring insignia mixed with hoverboard combo which allows for infinite hovering. And now I'm gonna fight Duke Fishron. My Xeno Popper's doing plenty of damage to Duke. I'm just dodging out of the way, staying on full health because Duke is incredibly easy. Second phase Duke is no problem for me. Once he gets down to third phase, he does hit me a couple times, but I dodged one of them and it really was no problem and Duke has been defeated. I fought him a bunch more times to try and get the wings, but to no avail. I then fought the Empress again to get the wings, but didn't get it. But I did get some dev armor. I fought her again 
down and died and realized just how long it was taking. So I gave up and went back to Duke Fishron. And I fought him multiple, multiple more times. Just kept attempting it. Luck was not on my side this playthrough. But I finally got it. And now with basically everything I need, I went over to the dungeon and summoned the lunatic cultist. Now the cultist shouldn't be too hard since most of the time he's standing still before he teleports. Which means my Xeno Papa can lay into him. A Wyvern decides to show up for some reason. And because of that, I end up hitting the wrong cultist. So I have to defeat a dragon. Then I almost hit the wrong one again, but luckily just missed it. And I keep doing a bunch of damage to Lunatic Cultist. Xeno Popper is doing work. The Wyvern jumps in again, and I almost didn't hit the right one in time, but I just sneaked a shot in, killed the Wyvern, and as a desperate last attempt, he spawns in his duplicates, but I shoot him once and he's dead. And now the celestial creatures are invading. The first one I go and do is Stardust. I farm a bunch of star cells and destroy the pillar. I then go over to the Nebula pillar, die, and then decide I hate that pillar and go to the Vortex pillar. And it's not much better there. I died a couple times, Frick! and then I started multiplying a bunch of alien queens, but eventually the pillar has been destroyed. Now over to the Nebula pillar, I just threw myself at it, and it wasn't too bad. Being ranged made it possible. And I just cheesed the solar enemies, you know how it is. And even with cheesing, I died a couple times. But I quickly defeated the solar pillar, and now impending doom approaches. Will I be able to defeat the Moon Lord with only shotguns on master mode? Let's freaking find out, gamers. I start off by shooting the top eye and then shooting his hand eyes a bit. My strategy is pretty normal from usual. I'm just using soaring insignia and wings, shooting at the top eye when it's open and shooting its hand eyes when it's not. I almost killed myself by bumping into a sky island. I'm gonna try and make sure that doesn't happen again. And I keep laying into its eyes. The damage is pretty good. I'm doing quite a lot of damage. Xeno Popper has surprisingly quite a bit of range for a shotgun. I am using crystal bullets, which do much more damage damage than something like chlorophyte bullets. It's just I have to actually aim. I'm at a weird point where the top eye is actually at less health than the hand eyes. So I kind of need to make sure that I don't destroy the top eye before the hand eyes are ready. I get pretty low at one point. I'm down to like 90 health. So I need to keep my distance a bit more. Make sure that I get my health back up. The Valhalla's chest plate is getting me a bunch of health and I do get a heal off. I managed to destroy the top eye first and then I quickly destroyed the right hand eye. The left hand eye was a little behind but I killed it pretty quickly and now it's just the core. This is pretty simple. I just keep my distance. Make sure to not get hit by the True Eye of Cthulhu's lasers. Destroy the leeches when I can. Don't get hit by the circle of eyeballs and apart from that I mean it's textbook. The core's taking a bunch of damage. It's no problem. We're basically full health at this point. Super easy and just like that the Moon Lord falls to me. Let's go GG easy and we are the victors of Terraria master mode but with only shotguns. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This playthrough was quite a bit of fun up until the gauntlet of unluckiness that I got which was incredibly cringe and really dragged this playthrough down because I did this mostly just for fun as a breather from some of the more insane playthroughs I've done recently. Thanks again to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Don't forget you can play it right now on PC, PlayStation and Xbox for free. Just check out the link in the pinned comment or video description and remember new and returning players that haven't played in six months will also receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms, including multiple premium vehicles and other goodies. Available for a limited time only, so make sure not to miss out. Thanks again, War Thunder, for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video, which is Terraria Master Mode Pickaxe Only. I'm sure you guys will enjoy that one.